today. Yeah. Bible said it's one today. You know, it's most interesting. Um, when I'm leaving church, going home, because I did that day, I always pass Hillview, and I always say to myself, how come those brethren still in church? <laughs> because we get out of church 12, 15, 12, 30. I can't help you today because you brought me up at 12, 30. <laughs> but now I know why when I'm passing, you are still worshiping. But, but that's okay. I want to thank Elder Jones for his kind words of introduction. Your pastor and the, the church board for the invitation to be here with you today. I am just honored and elated to be in, in the pulpit once again. Normally when I preach, I, I always have a, a translator these last three years. Um, my translator is here with me today, but um, she, she's not needed. <laughs> because we all understand what I am saying here. You know, I listened to the prayer that they have heard, and uh, you were concerned about what is happening in the Bahamas and in, in the world, and you, you long to go home. And uh, I guess we all long to go home when we look, to look around us and see what is happening in this wicked world of ours. And, and the choir set the tone right when they sang, we want to go home to, what's it, Canaan? Canaan's happy land. Beulah land, Canaan land. They, they all are the same. Um, but the point is that we all are looking forward to going home. Yeah. And uh, I find it very interesting because after going through all those things, those, those things that are happening in our society, I have given my sermon the topic, but joy comes in the morning. Yeah. So we go through them. We go through all of them. Yeah. But the good news is, joy comes in the morning. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for what you have done for us. For Jesus, our elder brother, whom you sent as an example for us. Now, Father, as we go through your word, we pray that your Holy Spirit will be with us. Open my mouth, my understanding, so that the saints would be blessed. And many should come, give us a place in your kingdom. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. But joy comes in the morning. Have you ever felt like giving up? Throwing in the towel, so to speak? H have you ever felt like every time you turn around, something else is broke? Or late? Or, or something is wrong with something or somebody in your life? Have you ever laid in bed at night? And your problems have gotten you so bad that it even seems like the darkness of the night has even turned its back on you. So you lie awake in bed, afraid to go to sleep, wondering will the night ever end. Well, brethren, if this is you, then I want to talk to you today about an unspeakable joy that the world didn't give you and the world can't take away. Amen. I, I want to talk to you this morning about God's great joy. I, I want to give you three ways that you can have joy in the midst of your night season. Look back over your life. 
And then let us examine our text, Psalms chapter 30, verses 1 to 5. Verse 1 tells us, I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up and hast not made my foes to rejoice over me. Now that's good. He has not made our foes to rejoice over us. You know, sometimes I sit and I think that if I could just stop for a moment, no matter what's going on, no matter what I'm going through, no matter how dark the night may seem, if I could just sit back and think about what God has already done for me, I will have nothing to be sad about. Amen. Well, I'm a firm believer that if we can just look back over our life, we too could be like David and have a whole lot to be excited about. David had great reason to praise God. And, and I want to give you five sub points or reasons why David praised God and why he reminds us today that we should praise God also. Reason number one, which is found in verse one, God had lifted him up. Reason number two, still in verse one, God had not allowed his enemies to triumph over him. Reason number three in verse two, God healed his body. Reason number four, in verse 3, God saved his soul. And reason number 5, taken from verse 3, God kept him alive and delivered him from certain defeats in battle. This particular psalm of thanksgiving is for the great deliverance that God had worked out in David's life. When man wants to do things his way, it results in sin. And sin has consequences. I heard someone say that sin takes you further than you ever intend to go. And it keeps you longer than you ever intended to be kept. And it costs you more than you ever intended to pay. Go back with me if you may. To Psalms chapter 30. Now, I, I can't help but to think that David also took a trip back down memory lane. And, and probably through, he thought about how God had given him the strength when he was a little boy to kill a lion and a bear that troubled his thoughts. I'm sure David thought from time to time about how God had given him the victory over Goliath with one smooth rock. 1 Samuel 17, 50 tells us how God gave him victory over the Philistines and his other enemies. Yes, David had great reasons to praise God. Well, what about you? Look back over your life and see how God has delivered you over and over again. Do you remember the other day when you almost had that accident? When you maneuvered and it didn't happen? That it wasn't your skill. It was God that delivered you. God has been good to us. I recognize that God did not what God did for me and what I couldn't do for myself. I shouldn't be here. I should not have had another chance. I recognize that although I'm not where I'm going to be, thanks be to God, I'm not where I used to be either. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm reminded of a story of an Indian who was in the middle of the road one afternoon praising and glorifying God. A pilgrim walked along and asked him, Mr. Indian, 
Why are you praising the Lord? What has he done for you? The Indian didn't say a word. He just knelt down and started to dig a trench. Then he looked and saw a worm. And he picked up the worm and dropped it in the middle of the trench. Then he went and got some flammable liquid. Then he struck a match and lit the fluid on one side and he did the same on the other side. And there is this little worm in this trench, unable to help himself, surrounded by death. Death and doom. You, you see, the worm couldn't go anywhere. He couldn't go forward and he couldn't go backwards. He was trapped in the middle of the flames. Then just when the flames were about to burn him, just when he was about to die, the Indian knelt down, scooped him up, and saved him. Then he looked at the pilgrim with tears streaming down his face and he said, this is what my God did for me. You, you see, that is what God has done for me. Amen. I was that little worm. Yes. I wasn't fit to live. I, I was scared to die. Yes. Then just at the right time, God reached down yes. and he saved my soul. Hallelujah. Isn't that how God is? Yes. God comes down at the yes. exact time and he leaves. Hallelujah. What a God. What a mighty God be saved, sir. Amen. And then we ought to remember and give thanks. Yes. Verse 4 says, Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. So we need to look back over our life, the past. Then we need to remember and give thanks. The, the present. Yes. We see here in verse 4 two commands to praise God. One, sing, and the other, give thanks. Yes. What I found interesting though is the fact that David had to command them to do it. You, you know, some things should just be understood. You, you know, someone gave you a hundred dollars. No one should have to tell you to tell that person thank you. It should come natural. It should come normal. These are normal things. You were created by God for God and, and, and your purpose. If you choose to accept it, it is to praise and glory his name. Maybe we have these two commands here because God knew that we would need to be reminded yes. to sing and to praise him. Yes. Christians should be the most joyous people Amen. on the face Hallelujah. of this earth. Yes. Why? Be because I, I read the story and I know how it ends. I, I hate to spoil it for you, but those of you in despair we get the victory. Yes. All we have to do is look back over our life. Amen. Remember what God has done for Hallelujah. us. And then give him the praise. Amen. Again, we see here in verse 4, two commands to praise God. Sing and give thanks. Some of you may be able to relate to just what David is talking about here. You've been near death. Yes. In the hospital or with some form of illness. Yes. You, you've come in some close other accident. Yes. Yet through it all, God has delivered you out of the pit of pain. Amen. 